be considered suspect of clinical cases. There is a report with working in an ICU, like most of the cases of our admission, we are faced the same problem. Just maybe we will have respiratory dis uh, uh, distress or any clinical, uh, uh, prenatal factors, maternal, we are going to start antibiotic, and after that, we will wait for blood culture, and after that, we will act accordingly. Early onset sepsis remains a challenging dilemma due to its relatively low incidence, high mortality, and lack of specific biomarkers for early diagnosis. With the incidence of culture proven sepsis ranging from 0.5 to 1.2 cases per 1,000 live births, early onset sepsis contributes 3 to 40 percent of mortality in neonatal population. And in well-appearing newborn with early onset sepsis risk factor, the rate of proven early onset sepsis was 0 0.02 to 0.19 percent. As we know, the standard diagnosis of early onset sepsis requires a positive blood culture, whereas a lab test has shown poor predictive value. Despite this, lab tests, especially CRP protein, are still widely used as a decision-making tool for diagnosis and treatment of early onset sepsis. As a consequence of non-definitive diagnosis, an appropriate antibiotic administration is common, and you know antibiotic usage associated with many side effects, especially in the adulthood, we may face a problem like autoimmune disorders, allergic diseases, obesity, later on in adolescent group. Furthermore, it's well known that severe early onset sepsis can still occur in newborn infants from mother without any perinatal risk factors. Broad spectrum antibiotics in early life may induce different short and long term adverse effects, longer hospitalization, because sometimes we'll start antibiotic, we will do septic screen, we will send blood culture, and what we have to do, we have to wait until our result will come. And after that, we are going to discharge our baby blood culture negative. Broad spectrum antibiotics in early life may induce different short and long term adverse effects, longer hospitalization, and also early mother child separation. So, to decrease unnecessary hospital admission and antibacterial treatment to well appearing infants, researcher and Kaiser designs an early onset risk calculator that provides individualized evaluation of early onset sepsis risk in neonates. 34 weeks and above, based on five, five objective maternal risk factors and four neonatal risk factors. As you know, by American Academy of Pediatrics, we have three tools based on what we can assess the risk of early onset sepsis, which is categorical, mainly based on perinatal risk factor, which was applied by many of us and maybe some institutions still is applying. Uh, they will go for perinatal risk factor, a clinical assessment of the baby. Based on the clinical assessment perinatal risk factor, you are going to uh, do septic screen and start antibiotic. Or there is like multivariant, which is infection calculator. And the third tool, which is accepted by American Academy of Pediatrics, this is systematic clinical examination, which is based on your experience and frequent evaluation of the cases. And based on your clinical evaluation, you are going to assist the baby start or not to start uh, septic screen and antibiotics. So neonatal early onset sepsis calculator based on predictive risk model developed using a nested case control design in cohort of around 608,000 newborns, 34 weeks gestational age, of older born and 14 hospital in United States and further advanced using logistic regression and recursive partial energy. It certifies newborn into three levels of risk with corresponding recommendation of management, including to start or withhold empirical antibiotic therapy. Implementation of early onset sepsis calculator at Kaiser Permanent Nose California hospitals, almost half the rate of antibiotic administration for 5 to 2.6%. 
among term and late preterm infants in the first 24 hours after birth. In addition, recently publication, which almost started from 2015 and is going now, show that early onset sepsis calculator compared to conventional management strategies show lower relative risk for empirical antibiotic therapy without affecting safety. This calculator tool is validated on the website. I can we see it's a way easier to be approached that we will just link a neonatal early onset sepsis calculator. It will immediately appear. And when you open this website, you will see the same table. So on the, your left side, you can see the perinatal risk factor. So mainly it's including incidence of early onset sepsis. It's based on your institutional rate, like uh, general uh, uh, on the incidence of early onset sepsis of your institution. Otherwise, from American Academy of Pediatrics, they advise to put 0.5 per 1,000. Gestational age, we have to put in the weeks and day. And uh, higher maternal temperature, uh, rupture of membrane, GBS status, it's like three category, otherwise negative, positive, or unknown. And also time of intrapartum antibiotic, you can see there's two types of antibiotic, which is broad spectrum antibiotic, which consider combination of the two antibiotics, usually kefalosporin and aminoglycoside, or GPS-related antibiotic, and there is time and duration when it was given before the delivery. And after that, when you are feeding this data, you can see on the right side, there is like a blue bottom, it's written calculate, you will just press on this one, and the data for each baby, which you are going to fill the data, will appear, and it will give you the incidence of early sepsis risk specified for each case which you are going to evaluate. Based on this uh, clinical condition, you are going to evaluate and put it in three, three categories, which is very appealing, equivocal and clinical illness, and it will give you additional factor, risk factor. Based on this, uh, calculator will advise for you to start antibiotic or just observe or uh, just do septic screen. This is how to assist clinical presentation of neonates based on clinical illness. So how you are going to define the baby's clinical ill based on this data, which you can see the baby need high flow nasal cannula, CPAP. If he is mechanically intubated, he is using a conventional high frequency ventilator. He is unstable. It seems he need him a, 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 an atopic drugs. He has signs of neonatal encephalopathy with conversion and upgrowth score less than five or the five minutes, or he needs supplementation of oxygen for two hours to maintain his oxygen situation above 90 outside of delivery room. So this is calculator will be applied when you are going to shift the baby uh, in your department. Equivocal. You have like two types, otherwise you have abnormalities which persistent for four hours and more, which is considered tachycardia, tachypnea. If the patient has a temperature instability or he is in respiratory distress, so you have one of this factor, which is lasted for four hours and more, or if you have two of these factors, which is continued two and above hours. Just keep in your mind that this is finding it's maybe not persistent, it has to be intermittent. So you have all the time evaluate the case and will appearing where the baby has no any physiological abnormalities. I just put some example here. <clears throat> I just took the incidence, one per 1,000. Actually, this data from our hospital, uh, from King South Medical City, we calculated. Uh, our data is showing that we have incidence, one to per 1,000. Gestational age, I just put term baby, 37 weeks plus three days. Mother was a febrile, but what we have here, risk factor like rupture of membrane for 20 hours. Maternal GBS unknown, and mother didn't receive any antibiotics. So when I fill this data, I press on the button calculate, which is blue color. You can see the general, based on this perinatal risk factor, the incidence of the sepsis for this specific case, this is advantage of infection calculator, that it will calculate for each case separately. You can see the incidence will be 0.56. However, if the patient like well appealing, the calculator advise you not to do anything 
no need to do any lab test, no need to start antibiotic, but what we are going to do, just routine vital signs, you are going to observe. Why it's equivocal, as I discussed, the baby um, unstable, he's tachypneic, he's in respiratory distress, you may consider to start blood culture, but he doesn't advise for you to start antibiotics. However, you are going to evaluate the patient uh, every four hours. Again, as I mentioned before, this is data like intermittent. If you find the baby deteriorate more, you have like facility to start antibiotic anytime. And clinical illness, you can see in this point, the risk of infection, if the baby uh, uh, infected, if the baby clinically sick is way high. It's reaching now 11.68 per 1,000. So it seems really this is the time when you will consider that baby actually need to be started antibiotic. So how to see, because we, I know some of them believe, someone is not believe, like Dr. Yachter has mentioned, he is not believing in infection calculators. So let's see how it's functioning, how it's work. This is a <clears throat> meta-analysis was done like to support antibiotic stewardship in early onset sepsis meta-analysis, we can see here forest plot for uses of antibiotic. You can see that here uh, the uses of antibiotic relative risk of using antibiotic is significantly decreased after applying infection calculator. The same we can tell for unnecessary blood investigation and also the incidence of neonatal admission was significantly decreased. What is about the calculator and maternal cholio omniitis? Because like, this is the main issue when we have this maternal fever, all of us is worried that the baby needs to be started antibiotics. Okay, so the diagnosis of clinical cholioomniitis is common and associated neonatal morbidities. However, the vast majority of exposed infants do not have confirmed early onset sepsis. Relatively large reduction associated with the management guided by the early onset calculator in newborn exposed to chloromniitis were reported. Also use of early onset calculator in this population in controversial. However, epidemiological data support the safety of limited use of empirical antibiotics in this set. This is a study which was used uh, calculator specifically on the cases with maternal history of chloromniitis. And you see the conclusion that they found that even if there is maternal history of chloromniitis, antibiotic usage was decreased without missing early onset sepsis. Uh, risk management strategies for early onset sepsis need to be balanced between the risk of missed case of early onset sepsis against harm of unnecessary usage of antibiotic. This is a systematic review, which was published 2019. They look not only of the rate of decreased antibiotic usage, but also on safety, how it's safe. What they consider the safe data is there was any missed case, readmission, treatment delay, mortality, and morbidity. You can see there was 13 uh, articles what was involved. Most of them was done in the US, Australia, New Zealand. Like four of them was done pre before and after, and the remaining uh, hypothetical database analysis, we can see the relative risk of usage antibiotics significantly decrease uh, with a range from 2.5 to almost 60, and even more if you uh, uh, include the articles with chloromniitis. Yeah, we can see like here, like if after subgrouping, we can see that relative risk uh, of uh, decreasing of usage antibiotic decreased to 20% by 20%. Available evidence regarding safety of the use of early onset calculator is limited but show no indication of inferiority compared to conventional management strategies. Like the systematic review, when they compared like two category of the approaches early onset sepsis, actually they show the same data of missed case. It was 28% in when you apply infection only uh, uh, sepsis calculator and when you went to conventional. So something can be done better than early onset calculator. 
Actually, COVID Joliet 2022 suggests that combination of early onset sepsis calculator and the universal systemic physical examination may be effectively minimize some of the risk without increasing adverse effect. It was prospective study which involved 2,000 neonates, 35 weeks and above, in, in four months period between November up to March. They divide the cases like they make observation for four months uh, to, in uh, three categorical assessments. The first one categorical, universal, which they apply uh, systematic physical examination. And third, they use combination of infection calculator and physical examination. Frequent, so what they found, the main outcome, uh, lab test, antibiotic treatment, and day of hospital was significantly decreased when they apply mainly combined intervention, infection calculator, and systemic physical examination. And this is odd ratio. We can see like it's significantly improved uh, uh, unnecessary usage of antibiotic and lab investigation. This is like a, uh, out of this study, they found seven cases rarely developed early onset sepsis. Most of them was uh, GBS and E. coli. So this is number one. It was first categorical group when they apply like uh, uh, the categorical assessment based on perinatal factors, a clinical assessment. Uh, so two, three, fours when they apply clinical uh, examination, and uh, five, six, seven when they apply combined uh, approaches with calculator and clinical examination. I just want to pay attention to number two. This is case you can see. Uh, term baby with GBS status negative, mother was clean at the age of 35 weeks and she was GBS negative. No risk factor, no antibiotic was started. However, at the age of the 14 hours, the baby became symptomatic and actually it came GBS, sepsis and meningitis and baby died within 24 hours after in spite of starting antibiotic. I just want to pay attention about GBS colonization. It's remain one of the most important metrics to evaluate, but this information can be inaccurate. And as we told presented patient in a P2 population with no perinatal risk factor developed severe GBS, which will lead to death. And mother was clean. American Academy of Pediatric and American College of Obstetrician Gynecologists updated Guidelines 2020 for the prevention and management of perinatal GBS disease. And based on this one, they changed now the time for the screening. Instead, like it was before 35, now they apply 36. And uh, why this changes was done? Like based on observations that in error of good compliance, the antenatal screening and administration intrapartum prophylaxis, most cases of GBS still can happen and occur in the term neonates, and this is what we can see in our study. So another concern that uh, this calculator was mainly applied in US population, so it's maybe some difference when you are going to apply, uh, apply to the other countries. Based on this one, we want to see, like, what about infection calculator when we are going to apply in Saudi Arabia? Is it going to be function or not? So we propose that calculator can be served as a tool of change away from the previously recommended practice, and it may decrease unnecessary investigation and treatment. So this is our study, which we published in 2021, and we like, assess the infection risk calculator. This is also our data to see unnecessary usage of antibiotic lab tests. And this data our shows that antibiotic usage in our uh, institution, which is big institution, which is 1,500 beds, we can decrease by 27% and decrease admission, lab, and the length of stay. So summary of collecting data, I put something for the benefit and potential challenges. So advantages that it's a uh, uh, provide information about infant individual risk. It's include objective data. It's a, re a result in relatively few well appearing newborn infants being treated empirically with antibiotic. It decreases the lab investigation and also the available evidence regarding neonatal calculator safety is not sufficient, but however, it does not show that it's inferior to other available tools. Potential that uh, this is a, a need for good education, practice, and it's need for monitoring, and symptoms such as skin discoloration, parallel 
John that it's not implemented in infection calculator. And sometimes like some symptoms, uh, maybe like a uh, consequence of different uh, pathological state like TTM. So by the conclusion, by analyzing results uh, from studies across, across the countries with different level of onset sepsis incidence and different standards of neonatal care quality, the result of conducted meta-analysis study gave us assurance of applicability, divinity, and safety on the neonatal sepsis calculated implementation. Presently available data provides marked evidence that sepsis calculator significantly guided clinicians to implement antibiotic However, keep in mind that even well conceived newborn with no risk factors still can develop early onset sepsis. Therefore, a risk calculator should be considered only as supportive tool that providers can use safe after looking to clinical condition of the baby. So what will be the next promising combined strategy of universal clinical physical examination and early onset sepsis calculator has been suggested as associated with significant reduction in the lactating and the And thank you so much.